want to welcome you all, and it's good to see a nice crowd here. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand, and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So I'm sure you all know this forum is for the um, candidates for Queen Anne's County Commissioners. And when you, when you vote, you're going to be voting for one at-large candidate and then from one from each district. So everybody gets to vote for all the districts and the at-large candidates. So this forum is presented by the um, Queen Anne's County League of Women Voters. We are, um, we do not discriminate. We are nonpartisan and our goal is to see everybody vote who is eligible to and also give every citizen enough information about all of the candidates and the questions on the ballots, everything you're going to see when you go into the polls, so that you can make your own decision. We're not telling you or suggesting who you should vote for or how you should vote. But we want you to make an informed decision. So that's why we have these forums. and We go out and do voter registration, <coughs> and we just try to give you as much information as possible. And one way is through the publication of our voter's guide, which just came out and is going to be distributed this week in the local newspapers as an insert. For those of you who don't get delivery of local of the um, local papers, the Star Democrat, the um, um, Record Observer, thank you, the Bay Times, um, we have some extra copies out here, and we will have copies in the in um, the libraries and some other areas. So somebody said to me, "I already got this," and they didn't. What they got is this, which you all should have already received, which is, excuse me, which is um, put out by the um, Board of Elections and is sent to every registered voter, and it's a copy of what you're actually going to see when you go into the polls. So all it is is a listing of all of the positions, all of the um, candidates. What you're going to get in this is an explanation <coughs> of every one of the offices that you're going to be voting for and everybody who is running is a candidate has answered questions that we have asked them about all kinds of different pertinent issues environment um, whatever so you should you should pick up one of these if you don't already have it and and look through it before you go to the polls Okay, that's that. I want to um, I want to say a big thank you to APG Media and its president David Fike because they this is um, they publish these for us and charge us only half price for it. So it's a good. Um, support for the League of Women Voters. Between the three leagues on the Eastern Shore, which is Kent County, Queen Anne's County, and Mid Shore, we print 40,000 of these papers. So it's pretty expensive. <coughs> you can also view the, view, to, view the Voter's Guide <coughs> online at vote411.org, where you can also check on your voter registration, make sure your address is right, you, whatever, you know, where, where do you go to vote, all that kind of um, information. And um, that's pretty easy to do. And if you need to change your address or do any of that, you can do that right online too. Okay. Another thing I wanted to tell you about is the forum that's going to be next Sunday in Easton, and it's going to be a forum for U.S. House of Representatives, <coughs> District 1, um, 2 o'clock at the Talbot County Free Library in Easton, which is a, a different location than we've had forums in the past. 
Um, Andy Harris, Jesse Colvin, and Jenica Martin have all agreed to participate. Space is limited, so try and get there early if you want to actually get into the building. And the form is presented by the Leagues of Women Voters of Kent County, Queen Anne's County, and Midshore. So tonight's form is being taped by Queen Anne's County TV. Where are you? In the, in the <laughs> taping room. <laughs> and I really want to thank them. Um, within a couple of days, they have their forum um, taped and available to be seen. We will put it on our Facebook page, League of Women Voters of Queen Anne's County. And you'll be able to read, you know, share it with your friends if they're not here, um, or look at it again. So at this point, let's go on to our form tonight. Um, the moder our moderator tonight is Ms. Marjorie Ellsberg. Um, she lives in Kent County, and she has been a big supporter of the League of Women Voters. And Ms. Ellsberg will now take over the forum, introduce our candidates, and explain the rules and expectations. Marjorie. There we go. Um, this is Le the league's forums are run usually quite wonderfully, um, and I I assume that you all will behave. Um, it's an informational <laughs> forum. Um, after opening statements from each candidate, you will be invited to come up one at a time and ask any question that you want, and we would like you to ask the question of one candidate. It, it, say, say your name, say where you live, and ask the question of, of one, choose one candidate, and then that candidate's opponent will have a chance to respond also. So the candidate you choose gets a minute and a half, and the opponent gets one minute, and if there are any other candidates who would like to chime in, they will be welcome to chime in. The, every subsequent candidate will have one minute, will have, uh, will have one minute to answer. Um, you don't have to, but you are more than welcome to answer. Some answers, some questions are, you know, something that are universal, others might not be so universal. Um, questioners should please refrain from personal comments. Uh, public exchanges like this one works best if there's a, I love this, who wrote this? This is great, a high level of civil, civility and decorum. So you all have to behave. Okay, there we go. Um, please don't use this as an opportunity to address specific personal situations. Rather ask questions of a more general interest to the public. Um, please hold your applause. We want to keep this al moving along. Uh, opening statements are two minutes long. Closing statements after audience questions. Everybody has one minute to speak. That's 30 minutes if, if we don't even breathe between them. So, so no comments and no audience stuff. Afterwards, we, you all can applaud your brains out. Have a wonderful time. Um, and there we go, okay? Are there any questions? <coughs> what? Oh. oh yeah, silence your phones, please. <laughs> Anything else that, that you have that will make noise, okay? <laughs> Chewing gum, bubble gum, anything, okay? All right, now we've sort of drawn straws, and the first, the opening statements are going to start with District 3, and Phil Duminell is going to speak first, and Jim Coulter will speak second, and then we'll go, the next group will be District 2, so you're on deck, okay? So District 3. Uh, Phil, there we go. Good evening, everybody. Um, as Ms. Ellsberg said, my name is Phil Duman. I'm running for County Commissioner, District 3. Um, I'm running uh, for re-election, actually. I served uh, as a commissioner in Queen Anne's County from 2011 to 2014. And in that time period, um, in addition to the responsibilities as a commissioner, I also served on four boards for four consecutive years. The Commission on Aging, the Parks and Recs Advisory Board, the Fire and EMS Commission, and also the Department of Emergency Services Advisory Commission. So I bring a tremendous amount of experience and understanding of the process. I was a participant in four of the budget cycles that took place in that four years that I served. So on November 6th, I'd appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. 
We started this journey uh, with these people and a few more on a cold day in March. Now we got another cold, wet day. At the end of the day, I hope all these guys will be my friends. We've, uh, we've come a long way, and I'm reminded of, uh, of a Dave Mason song. <laughs> All my references in life go to rock and roll songs. He said, there's no good guys, there's no bad guys, there's just you and me and we just disagree. I'm an Army veteran. I uh, went to school under the GI Bill. I uh, graduated with a, a degree in business from Maryland and a master's degree in finance from George Washington University. My family moved here in 1961, and after I graduated from college, I worked in a number of corporate jobs where I managed very large budgets. We had a $200 million budget up I managed. I managed financial systems, accounting, and then became a, a senior vice president and president of a, uh, of a corporation that managed 600 people. I've got the experience and the knowledge to handle this job. I look forward to this job. We've talked to Hundreds of people going to door to door since, <coughs> since that rainy day in March. People are talking to us about issues of traffic, issues of controlled growth, and issues of education. Hopefully we'll have a discussion about those issues tonight. I look forward to it. Thank you. District two, Steve Wilson is first, Ben Tillman is second. Evening folks, and actually mostly friends. I, I feel like I know almost three quarters of the people in the room. Steve, can, we need you to be louder or closer to the mic, okay? Either one. You can stand, hold the mic, whatever you want to do, but we need to hear you, okay? Go. <laughs> All right, my name is... Thank you. My name is Steve Wilson. <laughs> I'm a current county commissioner and running for county commissioner and uh, what I want to do is what we've been doing, which is doing a good job. This set of commissioners during this term has uh, really brought the county ahead in a very positive way. We have a very solid bank balance. The services we turn out, which is what government really is about, are first class. Our EMS service is probably the best in the United States, or at least the state of Maryland. Uh, our finance department is forward looking. Our, almost all the operations we do are done in the most uh, efficient and high level of service way we could. What I intend to do if you reelect me is to see that that same performance carries forward and that uh, you get the same nice county to live in that you've had for the last four years. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ben Tillman. I'm a candidate for county commissioner in District 2. <laughs> I've had a lifelong association with the Eastern Shore, my family a bit longer than that. Uh, I served four years in the Navy in the late 60s and have done most of my working career in the printing business, uh, manufactured textbooks and Bibles and everything in between. Uh, I've been in sales and sales management and factory and factory management. And there are three things that I'm really interested in for Queen Anne County. One is world-class education. I'd like to see us not only be excellent, but be uh, at the absolute top of the list. Uh, that raises all boats. It attracts residents. It attracts businesses. It uh, generates a better workforce. I'd like to see the comprehensive plan done very, very well. And that's a huge responsibility that we are going to have as the next batch of commissioners. And it requires public input. And I sincerely hope and I pretty well suspect that everybody in this room will be generous with their input. But we're going to seek as much input as we possibly can. It doesn't work if you do it any other way. And the third thing, which always sounds a little bit uh, like a detail, is uh, high-speed broadband for the entire county. And I'm absolutely determined to see that through. Uh, without it, you really can't pull in businesses It'll hamper your ability to run a good educational system. Uh, it will discourage people from moving here. Uh, I look forward to your support in November and do ask for your vote. And thank you very much. Uh, the, next, um, the next speakers will be um, Jack Wilson from District 1 and Annette DiMaggio. 
Good evening, everybody. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Jack Wilson. I am presently serving as your commissioner in District 1 up here in North County, God's country as I like to call it. <coughs> uh, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for having us tonight and all you folks for taking time out of your busy Monday nights to come out and listen to a bunch of politicians, I guess. Um, and I want to thank my fellow candidates. This is a hard road. This is my second time around running for office. Um, you make a lot of friends. You meet a lot of people. You get to talk about a lot of different things. And that's what makes the county go. We run as D's, R's, I's, P's, but at the end of the day, the five people that sit over there at the Liberty Street work for everybody. And I think that's the key. That's the thing we have to keep in mind. And the focus is always on the future, not what happened in the past, not where we came from, but where we're going. And that's the way I've always operated my business that I've had for 25 years, and that's the way I've tried to operate as a commissioner for the last three plus years. And with your support, I can have four more years, and that's the way I'm going to handle the next four years as well. Thank you. Annette DiMaggio. First, let me thank you for inviting me here. Um, I am currently a uh, board member. I'm the president of the Queen Anne's County Board of Education. I'm a native of Queen Anne's County. I have three sons that were born and raised here. Uh, recently, my husband and I became empty nesters. We're not sure whether we like it or not. Um, <laughs> so, um, but my concerns for the county are, first of all, uh, education. Um, I think we can do a better job with education with our children our children are our future all of us sitting here uh, I don't know how to solve the problem but opioids is another problem that I have that um, we have to do more something different I'm not sure how to handle that either um, and the other thing would be affordable housing and homelessness um, I live in North County where we have families that um, there are two or three families living in a house we have families that are cal couch surfing and that is all considered homeless and uh, those are the those are the three things that I would like to see worked on thank you the at-large candidates um, Jim Moran goes first, and Elaine Harrison second. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Jim Moran, and I am your at-large county commissioner and have been to that position for the last five years. I would like to say thank you to the League of Women Voters. This is the uh, fourth forum that I've been able to do with the League of Women Voters, and I think it's very professional and it's run well. I'd like to talk just on the fact that uh, the slate, the Queen Anne's County Team QAC slate, the five of us, uh, Chris Corcorino, Phil Duminell, Steve Wilson, and Jack Wilson, uh, like-minded in where we are now with our county, how we've gotten here, and where we want to go with the county. Uh, I think that I, I can't echo what they said any better than what they said as far as where we sit as a community and as a county. We're sitting in a great, great position, our services, our AAA bond rating, and moving some of these projects forward. I know four years ago, I think that I was called the black uh, swan because I was the one and there was four. But through collaboration and working together, we pulled together as a team and got this county where it needs to be now. So I'm very proud of what we've done over the last four years, and we'd like, well, I'm asking for your vote to continue on for the next four years. Thank you. Elaine Harrison. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Elaine Harrison. I uh, was raised on Ken Island. I attended Ken Island Elementary School to Queen Anne County High School. Raised my own family here, built my own business here. I'm a self-employed accountant. I don't do income taxes. I do budgets and cash flows. I read financial statements. Um, there, there are a lot of issues that we're facing right now, and uh, I want to see that we keep our balanced budget um, moving in the right direction. Right now, we pay the highest income tax allowed by state law, and I feel we can do a lot to bring that back down. We've got a AAA bond rating right now, and it's been on our backs out of our pockets, and it's our money. So I think we can do, find better ways to spend it. I think we must invest in broadband education, uh, for our education, for emergency services, for bringing business here into Queen Anne's County. We've got a lot of work to do, and it's going to be critical that we, as we open up that comp plan, that the um, the right decisions are made to ensure that we have a land of pleasant living for the next 10 years as well. Thank you. And District 4, Chris, 
Uh, Corturino is first, and Deborah Kruger is second. Good evening, everybody. Thank everybody for coming out. Thank you to the candidates and to the League of Women Voters. <clears throat> As I said, my name is Chris Corcorino. I am running for County Commissioner in District 4. I'm a longtime resident of Queen Anne's County. I graduated from Queen Anne's County High School right across the street from here. Uh, my three daughters attend Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I think I'm the only candidate that currently has three children who are in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, my niece, who's out in the audience, is also a student here in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. <coughs> Uh, my wife is a small business owner here in the county, and I'm, I'm an attorney. And I know a lot of people think that an attorney's skill is argument, uh, but that's really not uh, that's really not the case. Um, we're problem solvers, and and what we use is we use effective communication, <coughs> strategic forethought, and thoughtful analysis to find solutions to the challenges that are facing our clients. And that's a skill set that I want to bring to the county commissioners. We have. Um, a vibrant community with convergent views and opposing views. And in order to reconcile those, the county commissioners need to be good communicators, good listeners, and then ex explainers of what their position is. You may not agree with me on the way that I vote, but if you can understand my thought process of where I got to that, you're going to at least feel that the vote was fair. Um, and I can make that promise to you, everybody, that you're not going to like everything I do. On some days you're going to like me, and other days you're not. But at the end of the four years, I hope that you find that I'm fair, and I'm asking for your vote. Deborah Kruger. Good evening, everybody. Last but not least, hopefully. My name is Deborah Kruger. I'm running for county commissioner from District 4. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Thank the League of Women Vos Voters for um, hosting us. I um, have a little bit of a different background than the other candidates sitting up here. I've been in public education for 35 years, specifically special education. I work in a school district across the bridge. So I am heavily invested and love the idea of public education and funding public education appropriately. I work with kids that have the se severest of disabilities that are not able to be educated in their home schools. So I need to bring a team of people together in order to, I'm a speech pathologist and I work with mostly people that are nonverbal. And so it is my job to figure out a way to help them communicate. And I do that with the other staff in the school, with um, companies that have assistive technology available to us, with occupational therapists with physical therapists to get the best way to help that child communicate. I am a union leader in my school, a union representative, so I speak for the other teachers in my school and represent them the best that I can. I run a school pantry in my school, shopping and loading and unloading groceries every week, and we feed about 50 families in our school because I learned last year that some of our families were forced to make a decision before, um, between buying food for their families and buying medicine that their kids needed, and so we started that program. I'm very proud of the work that I do. I'm proud that I'm able to bring together people to make decisions that are important and I live by two anthems I live by that everybody has a voice and everybody has a right to be recognized and I truly believe that and that is one of the reasons that I'm running is to make sure that everybody's voice is heard and the other one that I live by and tell my kids all the time is that everybody has a right to a say in their in their government whether it's local government state government or federal government and I'm here to make sure that you have a say and that your voice is heard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, it, um, I want to re reiterate that all voters will vote for, have the opportunity to vote for one candidate from each of the five, the four districts and at large. Okay, you know, I, I hope that's clear to everybody. So now it's your turn. Um, anybody who would uh, uh, raise your hand, I'll call on you. Okay, sir, you're first. Come on up to the table. I, speak. Can I get a vote of the audience real quick? Would, sir. would you prefer that we stand up to speak or sitting down fine? We're good sitting? Okay. Just stand. So tiny. Ah. Want me to sit so you can hear me. Right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Standing is better. Thank you. All right. My name is Bruce Herman. Uh, I live on Hope Road in Centerville. And I'm also a officer in the Queen Anne County. Queen Anne. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Queen Anne oh, County's Anne Economic Development Commission. Somebody lean against the light. Um, there we go. There we there go. We go. <laughs> I thought it might be something I said. <laughs> 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 there we go. 
<laughs> no, anyway, um, Queen Anne County has been behind the curve a little bit on business development for quite some time uh, behind our neighboring counties. And that's where your, your ta tax growth is going to come from in the future. And as many of you know, or you should know, is the traffic along the 301 corridor is going to double in the next year because of the uh, bypass at uh, Middletown. That's going to increase the demand for services in, along that entire route. My question is directed to Steve Wilson. Um, do you support expanding the business community along that corridor? to offer services and also op other business opportunities? And if so, how? Sure. Um, but could you stand, Mr. Wilson, could you stand? Uh, there, the people in the back say they can't, they can't see you, okay? Steve. Thanks. So did everyone hear that question? Yeah. Good. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna have a deluge of traffic and it's not a welcome thing a bit for this county. It's gonna jam up uh, traffic on Ken Island and through the county and be in many ways destructive. I suppose the one rather minor advantage we might get out of is the capacity to build up some of uh, some business opportunity in District 1, as Royce points out. District 1 could use development in a, on, on, a, on the business side in a way no other part of the county could. So. What I would like to see is that it not just be a procession of gas stations and used car lots, but something that's constructive. When you bring business into a county, it's very important what kind of business you encourage because businesses that have large amounts of low wage workers actually are more destructive to your tax base, to your well-being than having nobody. What's important is that we bring business into the county that's um, reflective of a good income base so that we don't wind up loading up the county budget with more expenses than we do uh, than we do benefit. So I, I am encouraging of that and uh, what else, sir? Well, that, that answers my question okay. as to where you're Thank coming you. from. Thank you. Mr. Tillman, um, if you'd like to respond, you may. Yeah, yeah very quickly. Uh, you know, if ever there was an opportunity to see how the comprehensive plan is going to work, this whole question of the traffic down 301 is a perfect example. The difficulty up there is that there's not a lot of infrastructure. Uh, we don't have sewer. We don't have water. It's going to be uh, a huge undertaking to get us there. Not to say that there aren't ways that we can get uh, businesses put in, but it's going to require a good deal of uh, thought and planning to do it. Uh, the traffic itself we really can't do anything about. The irony I think is going to be that uh, since it's cheaper to go across the Bay Bridge westbound, you're going to get more traffic southbound on 301 than you will northbound. What that means I don't really know. Uh, I do favor economic development. I think it's extraordinarily important and I support Mr. Wilson's comment that we have to be cautious about what we bring in. We don't need four more Royal Farms and two more Wawa's. Uh, I think we're doing pretty well as far as we've gotten. But um, certainly there's an opportunity there. And as I say, I think the comprehensive plan is a great place to try and capture that. And thank you for your question. Uh, are there any other candidates who'd like to comment on that? I'll just uh, Deborah Cougar. So just to answer that question as well, the county recently commissioned a report for the North County as far as development. It was, it was done by the SAGE group, and I don't, I don't think it's a final draft yet, but when, when it is a final draft, I encourage everybody to read it. And it has some very good examples of businesses that could be located up in the Millington area and in the Centerville area as well. So that gives us a good guideline as to where we would want to build and what type of businesses would be attracted to coming here. So that's something to look forward to. Jim Coulter. I, I think that uh, economic development is, is extremely important, Royce. Um, I think that, uh, that we've, we've made some changes in government that we shouldn't have. We, uh, we reduced the number of staff on economic development from four to two. Cut this, cut this budget for economic development this year by $188,000. That was wrong to do. I think that, uh, that with the right amount of inf infrastructure and the right planning, that, that, uh, that there could be some silver lining to all this traffic coming down. The mayor of Millington has already, already talked about the fact that uh, 
uh, that uh, there's an opportunity to, to build houses for the, the folks that live in Delaware. There's also a new industry that, uh, that, uh, that we ought to consider, which is the distribution. Uh, sticks, uh, bricks and mortar retail stores are going away. More people are shopping online. We have an opportunity out there on Route 301 to build those kinds of centers which would add good growth to that area. Thank you. Um, Chris Corcorino. Thank you for the, <clears throat> for the question. Um, if anybody um, hasn't had the opportunity yet, if you go onto the county's website for the last commissioner's meeting, the video is posted and Ani Banbashur from the SAGE group is there discussing um, their findings. There's some really excellent information in the presentation that he did. One of the things um, that he pointed out, and I think this um, sort of piggybacks on what Commissioner Steve Wilson was saying, um, is to get the good jobs in here, and that's going to require getting the broadband in that area. If we want to get higher paying jobs, even if you want a distribution center, that's all high tech stuff. They, they need to have um, fiber going there in order to do that. Uh, Commissioner Jack Wilson is doing an excellent job spearheading the county's efforts to bring broadband to that area and other areas of the county. Um, but that's going to be essential in order for us to capitalize on having good paying jobs and economic development that comes from there. Okay, not seeing anyone else wants to comment. Thank you. Is there a next question? There we go. <coughs> Y'all are very, very well behaved. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Bonnie Babbitt Nelson and I have a question for Mr. Coulter. What is your vision for the growth of Queen Anne's County in the next 10 years? Could you make sure the, the, the microphone's aimed towards your chin? There we go. <laughs> no, it's movable. Move my chin yeah, right. the <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think we all talk about the economic, uh, economic uh, plan, the, the comprehensive plan. Uh, we have a pretty solid plan as, as, we, as we currently stand, and, and it needs to be uh, addressed. I, uh, and, and changes made with the input of, uh, of many of the organizations, homeowners associations, and, uh, and uh, uh, citizens groups. I, I do think that we not only need to look at where we grow, we need to protect our farmland. We need to consider the environment. We need to really, really consider traffic and what's happening with the Bay Bridge and, and uh, the overload of traffic on Route 50. Um, but it's a, with, the, with the input from the citizens, we can develop a, a good comprehensive plan that will take us through the next 10 years. Um, Phil Dumino. Would you mind re, uh, rephrasing the question? Rephrasing it or repeating it? <laughs> Ask the question again. <laughs> okay. um, what's your vision for the growth of Queen Anne's County for the next 10 years? Um, well, our comprehensive plan uh, already has a vision, and that is that we are a rural community that is economically viable. Um, we update our comprehensive plan every 10 years because the county has gone through changes over the last 10 years and you have to update the plan uh, to uh, make adjustments for those changes in the community because the community has different needs as, as the years go on. Um, I, I think uh, looking at uh, the north part of the county as the growth areas to support our town centers uh, should certainly be an important part of that. Um, again, the heavy issues, traffic, um, I think when you update the comprehensive plan, you certainly need to take in consideration the effects that traffic is going to have on that plan. Are there any other candidates who'd like to speak to this question? Uh, yes, uh, Ben Tillman. Uh, without being a, a smart aleck about it, my vision for growth in Queen Anne County is to see it done well mm -hmm. and done professionally. And that really encompasses a lot of broad thought. Uh, the other gentlemen have mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, have mentioned traffic and things of that matter, but also quality of life. You need education. You need broadband. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge question. And I think to bring clarity to it, you have to get into the details. But it's a good question. Thank you. 
Okay, hearing no more, thank you. Next question, from the back. You're next. My name is Richard Smith, I reside in Centerville. Um, I heard a lot about budgets, income tax and things like that. It's a tough thing to do, it's a tough thing to do. But what I, when you talk about growth in the northern part of the county, there's no infrastructure unless it's municipalities. We've been through that dog and pony show with Queenstown. Y Mills, the Y Mills plan, would that ever be considered to be put back on the table? Uh, it's closer to sewer, it's closer to water. We got a college there. We got uh, roads, both Route 50, 301 is close by with 213. And I'd like to ask everybody, but I'll start at large only because it's at large and everybody can comment on that. But the Y Mills plan was brought up about five years ago, kicked down. Uh, Talbot County is kicking our butt. And I just wonder, do we want to do something about it or are we going to try to put up in the northern part of the county, which is a good idea, but if no infrastructure and you all don't control the towns. Thank you. I'm sorry that large only because but I'll pick any of you. <laughs> uh, so so who, who are you asking? Elaine or Jim. Either one. You have to, you, yeah, go, okay, the, uh, the reason that I ask you to be specific is that the first person gets one and a half minutes, everybody else gets one minute. Jim, uh, Jim, right. Jim, Jim take a minute and a half. That's Jim Moran, go. Uh, a lot of you don't know, the, or maybe you do, maybe you don't know about the plan he's talking about, and it's something that we can review, because you're right, this comp plan, which is different from the last comp plan, is we have the septic bill. So the septic bill says everything's got to be serviced by sewer, so that's going to be, that's going to play huge. But we've also got um, uh, the uh, the septic bill and, and the um, I can't think of what the other one was. I'm sorry, but uh, 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 no, no, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, so the, we're going to have to take into account where we do our development by the, the services of the utility. So you know that that's going to play a large role. So this is a plan that we could review. But I think last time it was shot down, and, and I honestly don't know why, because that was 10 years ago, and I wasn't a part of that. Lane Harrison? I see no reason to exclude the Y Mills plan from any future revisiting of our comprehensive plan. But the first thing we're going to have to do is be sure that we have the broadband connectivity. And if we're going to be serious about attracting um, different employers and different um, industries into this county. Um, it's really hard to do that when we have the highest income tax compared to all of our neighboring counties surrounding us. Bill Dumino. So I think I'm the only one that um, served as a commissioner here in Queen Anne's County when that comprehensive plan, when the Y Mills plan was introduced. Um, Basically, the reason why it lost traction was because the courts ruled that it was inconsistent with our comprehensive plan. Um, the thought process behind the Y Mills plan was because of the, the location of it. Um, route 213 and Route 50 there was an ideal location to change the zoning from ag to light industrial, to draw small businesses, um, small manufacturing companies. Uh, with the rural farming nature that we have here in the community, we felt that um, it would attract the biotech industry. So uh, with the revisiting or updating of our comprehensive plan, I think that's certainly something we need to take a look at again is the y Mills plan. Are there any other, right? Yeah, Jack I just Wilson, like to see. <clears throat> and then Mr. Coulter. Quite frankly, it's called the comprehensive plan for a reason because it's comprehensive. Obviously, we're going to take a look at everything. Um, we know the challenges we have. You speak of the infrastructure. We have infrastructure in North County. And I don't like to rule the municipalities out and make them feel like they're not part of the county because they are. And the county can certainly work with the Settlersvilles, the Barclays, the Millingtons, the Church Hills and help them with their infrastructure, whether we have to advocate for them at the state to help them grow, because that's part of the future of the county is that those towns are going to flourish like they're supposed to under the 2010 comp plan. But they just haven't been given the tools, and I think we can do that here in the county. But the Y Mills plan, again, it's a comprehensive plan. I think we're going to look at it. We're going to look at everything comprehensively. Broadband has been mentioned that it's probably going to be mentioned 100 more times tonight, but that is one of our biggest detractors here in the county as we go forward is where we can develop. Jim Coulter. Well, I think, uh, Dick, the reason that uh, that, that uh, y, y Mills development was shot down is because in 2010 it was owned farmland. 
under the comprehensive plan. The commissioners at the time in 2012 attempted to change that comprehensive plan and they lost in court. The time to, to look at zoning is during the comprehensive plan. You can't vote against the comprehensive plan while you're a commissioner. And so we need to follow the comprehensive plan. We, that's, a, that's a plan that is put together by everyone's input. Once it's done, it becomes a plan of the future. Um, Annette DiMaggio. I live in North County, and I can tell you that Y Mills is great, but we do need to do something in North County. We have people that are struggling for jobs. They have to travel for a job. Um, we do have Middletown, Delaware. Uh, I'm 20 minutes from Middletown, Delaware. But I would like to see business, big business in North County so that we could, for the people that live in the area, for them to be able to work in the area that they live in. I'd also like to be able to um, not have to drive 20 miles to get a prescription filled or to get my groceries. And I'm sure the majority of the people in North County would appreciate the same exact thing. So. Yes, sir. Steve Wilson. Well, I guess I'm going to run a little bit against the, uh, the drift of the current here, Richard, because, yeah, I'm all in favor of considering Y Mills and considering everything. But something everybody in this county should understand is that business development, the, the idea behind it is you have business, you have jobs, but you also produce more taxes. Well, in Queen Anne's County, of our revenue that the county government takes in, 12% is business. The other 88% uh, comes from your personal taxes, property taxes, and income taxes. So the big driver in this county economically and in running this county is managing expenses. What we need to do is not overspend in this county, and we've been pretty stringent about doing that, and I intend to keep, if you reelect me, on the same path so that your taxes don't go up. Uh, Deborah Kruger. I'd just like to add to what Annette said. Um, the north part of the county, three of the schools up there are Title I schools, and we have the largest percentage of single parent families living up there. So North County, they, they need our help up there. I would could love you, to see some Could you explain what a Title I school is? Title I school is um, subsidized schooling. So 40% of the students or more have to re um, receive free or reduced lunch. So obviously, we have pockets of poverty up there. So what could be better than doing some economic development up there and offering those the citizens up there you know, a living wage? Thank you. Okay. Question. Hi, Helen Bennett, and I live in Chester. Thanks for being here. Um, my question is for Steve. Uh, I'm on the Economic Development Commission, and last week, uh, Congressman Harris came out and was and talked to a few of us, and Jack was there. And he said that he had gone to Kent County, and they were talking about the third span, and that Kent County absolutely does not want that span there, so he was not going to recommend it go there. Well, now you're pretty limited in where that span is going to go. So my question is, where do you think the best place is for that span to go? Um, do you approve of it? And then what would you do if it came to Queen Anne's County? What would you do to look after the interests of the Queen Anne's County citizens with the impacts that that would make? That is a terrific question. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm uh, no big fan of putting a third span in the county, but what everyone in the county would like is something very close to magic, which is that somehow we would put a, a bridge across the bay in some other part of the state other than this county and then move all the traffic there. The problem is what nobody is looked at so far is what is the expense and practicality of putting bridges in other parts of the state. And, and down in the southern part of the state, the, the crossing is twice as wide and lands in a bunch of swamps at, at Blackwater. And up in Kent County, they don't want it. And I don't think we're going to get a choice about this thing. Whatever happens is going to happen to this county on the basis of what the state determines. So what this county needs to do is defend its interest in traffic and see that we don't wind up with more of these ghastly traffic jams and backups. Uh, 
I don't, if I had a choice, I wouldn't put a bridge here. I'd move the bridge and the traffic to some other location. But if we are faced with that as a reality deposed or posed on us by the state, then I want to make sure we do everything we can, most specifically, including things like Jim Moran's um, um, uh, short of bridge traffic plan to see that we don't wind up with these backups that are really becoming destructive to the well-being of people on Ken Island. Ben Tillman, would you like to? Yeah, it's, it's a Gordian knot. I mean, there's no question. I, I don't know how you can untangle it. And it's a huge engineering problem. My suggestion is that we put in the third span, and then we can double deck Route 50 all the way across Ken Island. <laughs> uh, who knows? We all laugh at that, but it might turn out to be that. Uh, the problem, is, as Steve pointed out, is the engineering. The logical place to put the span is where they put it in 1952. And I will say that if I had mixed feelings about a third span today, I know my family had mixed feelings in 1952 about the bridge, so it goes back a while. But there's no question it's been an economic driver for the county. And it's no question so far, if you're not a pizza delivery guy on a Saturday, and we make light of it, but it's a huge problem for those people, um, that this bridge is going to be a problem that we hope we can do our best with the state uh, to come up with a solution that works intelligently. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chris Corcorino. Yes. Thank you for the question. Um, I've said before that I, I don't favor it coming to Ken Island, but I think, as Mr. Steve Wilson said, some things may wind up being out of our control. Um, I, I lived here long enough to remember every time they implement something that they said is going to save traffic, it's only momentary. I remember stoplights on Route 50 on Ken Island. I remember cars parked on the side of the road eating their lunches. I remember the drawbridge and the old outlets used to have lots of business from that. And each time they implement something, it, it's just for a short period of time that makes it better. So I think with a new bridge crossing, what the county commissioners need to be doing is working in coalition with the other counties on the Eastern Shore to try to get everything that we need on Ken Island and after Ken Island, as far as traffic easing devices, the Cox Creek connector, uh, another overpass if necessary, so that our citizens can get around while the people can get to the beach. Uh, Jack Wilson. Piggyback on Chris's comments, um, the right of refusal goes to any one county. Um, obviously, Kent County's in opposition, so they're going to refuse it. Um, Dorchester, where it may cross south, they may refuse. We don't know. But it, to piggyback on Chris, that's what we have to do as commissioners. We have to advocate the state. We have to lobby the state and tell them, look, just because you think it's $6 billion to get that thing across with these two bridges, that's not what it's going to cost you because we as Queen Anne's County have the right to veto it. And unless you're going to pony up the money to fix all our at-grade intersections up north, all of our overpasses that are needed down by the outlets and on the island and put our bike trails in and fix everything from the Bay Bridge past Easton, then it's a no deal for Queen Anne's County. We have to get something out of it. And the reason I say it's important is we're going to have a 15-year period from the time the NEPA study is done to the time that bridge is built. They can be getting all that done leading up to that bridge opening up, which will help the traffic along that time frame. Elaine Harrison. I think we're kind of missing the boat on this bridge. Um, Kent County is well organized, as you've already stated. We do have veto power, but at the same time, why why haven't we already started co uh, started a coalition amongst the other Eastern Shore counties? We do have that veto power, and we need to have strength within the numbers because it's not just our county that's going to be impacted by this bridge. It may to potentially be another county that is impacted by this crossing, and we should be there to be their partners to help help them understand the issues that we know firsthand come with that <coughs> Bay Bridge crossing. And I feel like we've really missed the boat on doing a coalition of counties for the shore to have a strong voice in the state. Um, uh, Jim Coulter had his hand up and then Deborah Kruger. I think there's two kinds of people in this world. The people that make things happen and the people that let things happen to them. I think that we should be strongly lobbying, lobbying the state to make sure that that built, bridge gets built to the south or no bridge. Uh, the, 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 the vision of having that bridge expanded in its current situation 
and double decking or giving us 10 lanes instead of eight lanes or 12 lanes right through our community is a vision we can't take. We've got to be strong in our resolve to make sure that the state understands where we stand on this issue. Deborah Kruger. And I'm just going to piggyback on what an, um, Elaine and Jim said. I um, have already spoken to people that are, are in the coalition in Kent County and had some ideas about how they've presented their position to the state. And like Elaine said, we need to be organized with that. We should be working with Kent County. We should be working with Dorchester County. We should be working with Anne Arundel County because Anne Arundel County doesn't want that bridge coming through them either. I mean, they sit in, the, the citizens that live in Cape St. Clair, they sit in that traffic just like we do. So I, I agree with Elaine in that. We need a, a strong coalition. I saw another hand in the middle. No? Okay, Jim Moran. Well, you know, first off, the bridge is, is far greater than anything we're going to talk about up here. And what I mean is for people to say that we, don't, we weren't working in a coalition aren't plugged into what we're actually doing. And I will tell you that every county on the eastern shore now does not have to be part of a coalition. They can just say no to it. Kent County has said no to it. The state recognizes the fact that Kent County has deep pockets and they'll say no. My question to the citizens of Queen Anne's County, if we say no to the bridge, and they could call it a replacement bridge, they could say the bridge is so old, we're gonna build you a new bridge, and oh, by the way, it's gonna be four lanes in each direction. So that, that might be a loophole that they try to use. If we wanna say no to a bridge altogether, that's fine, but are you willing to live with this traffic getting exponentially worse every year for the rest of your life? So that's something you need to take into account because we are working with the state. The, the, the cost of this bridge, as Jack had mentioned, is about $6 billion. That, that is from the 5301 split to the 5097 split. All new overpasses, all new exits. They own the right of way right now. It's the quickest way to get a bridge done. But again, Thank as you. your elected officials, we could say no to that. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Debbie Hardy. I live in Centerville. And let's go to Mr. Moran for this question. When we're talking about traffic, never once have I heard anybody say, what about some type of mass transit system to get people from Baltimore, get them from um, DC on a rapid train schedule, something like that, to where they're off the roads completely. So where is that in this plan? Is there anybody talking about some type of way to get people there faster and quicker? Mr. Moran? Well, I'll answer that because we, that discussion has come up uh, numerous times at the Bay Bridge Advisory. Okay. And people have said that. So why don't we do a high-speed train? How many people can you fit on a train and how many trains would it take to get everybody back and forth from the beach to get those cars off the, the road? The numbers, oh, but they could use it for work too, not just for. I understand, the but, but, but the numbers are staggering. The numbers are staggering. Right now, we have those traffic counters up right now, and 94% of all the traffic going through Queen Anne's County in August on the weekends is not Queen Anne's County's traffic. 6% of that traffic is ours. The rest is the state's. So, you know, no matter what you use, if high speed rail, whatever you want to use, it's going to require another bridge crossing. So that still is, is, is the problem with that. So people have mentioned it. They've mentioned bringing back the ferries. But largest ferry out there right now, I think, carries about 70 vehicles. How many times did I have to go back and forth when, when you're passing 1,500 cars per lane across that Bay Bridge? So it is, it, it, people are thinking outside the box for that. But it, it is a, just a staggering number. You need a train to go flying by every five minutes to, fully loaded with one or, th one or 2,000 people. And then when they get at the other end, they're going to have to get in a car or a bus or something also. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's an option, but I don't know how much uh, life that option has. Uh, Elaine Harrison. I worry with a, a train crossing that we once again are facing with the same problem of having a, uh, a bridge that that train has to go across. And um, that might be very prohibitive for a variety of reasons. Um, and I don't know that that's going to be the best bang for the buck here. I think that uh, right now we need to focus on that coalition of counties and the Eastern Shore having a solid, secured voice that that um, where we all agree we would like to see that bridge placed. Yes, sir. Steve Wilson. 
Yeah, I, I wish I could give you uh, hope, my dear, but it's, it's beyond hope. Uh, here, here's the deal. When you, when you do mass transit like railroads, you have to be able to distribute the people on both ends. And for instance, when you got a train load of people down to Ocean City, you have to have ways once you get there to get them up and down the beach. Right now they have their cars, drive up and down, put the beach umbrella and the children in it. Right now it would take enormous amounts of vehicles, parking lots, and on the other end where they assemble, they would have to have second cars. I mean, the problem of distribution of people at each end kind of condemns the idea besides the point that Jim, I think, has eloquently uh, made, which is that uh, we're moving almost 5,000 people an hour at rush hour over this bridge, and the number of trains it would take would make, uh, would make the uh, New York-Pennsylvania line look small. So I'd love, to say, uh, I'd love to say there was some hope, but no. Thank you, though. Anybody else? Hey, I, I do think other countries have uh, managed with more people, so I think it's still something that people need okay, to look at. This is supposed to be question and response. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Next question. Come back there. You're next. Thank you for all listening to us. I'm Bob Hardy. I live in Centerville. The word high-speed broadband has come up, I don't know, every two minutes. Well, you talk to the people, you talk to the educators, you talk to the businessmen. High-speed internet is very, very important for our economic development, for our youth, for just us to communicate in the 21st century. Why did it fail? And what is your plan for implementing it? And I'll ask Chris, because he's new, and I'd like to hear him say something about it. <laughs> Thank you for the question. I, I agree with you. It, I mean, it, it is um, essential as uh, electricity was back in the day to get it to all the homes. Um, it's something that you have to have now. Um, you, you need it for business. We have kids with Chromebooks who then can't use them um, at home. So that, that is something absolutely uh, essential. Uh, the, part of the reason that I think we've hit some stumbling blocks on it is for some of the same reasons you had with the electric companies back in the day. It's that, it's that connection in the rural areas for them to lay the fiber. It's much more expensive. If you're to lay high-speed fiber, let's say, in New York City, um, within a couple square blocks, they got about a million people that they can service, and they're going to they're going to get their money back really quickly on doing that. So that the companies are incentivized to do that. Out here, they're not going to get their money back on that. So you have to give them an incentive to be able to do that. Some of the ways that the county can do that, and I think the county is having discussions with the cable companies, is do they have deals where they can service the county buildings and the county schools as part of that in order to offset the cost. There's also different technologies that we can be used. There's, there's line of sight internet that shoots a signal from one receptor to another that can help you get without having to lay cable. We might have to use a combination of methods in order to get the high speed internet throughout the county. Ever Kruger? So I'd like to say that there is an advisory board right now for broadband, and I'm happy to say that it's led by women. So maybe if we want to get some things done, we need some women there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and they, from everything that I've heard from them and everything that I've seen written about them, they have responded with um, a great deal of detail in order to apply for grants for the program. And um, I'm not an expert in broadband, but these women are, and they seem to be on the right track. It's a shame that it's taken so long to get this group together, this advisory board together, but they seem to me to be moving in the right direction. Anybody else want to comment? Sure. Yeah. Yes, sir. Steve Wilson, and then... Uh, Jack Wilson. To give you an update, the Broadband Advisory Commission has been in existence since roughly May. Um, some, maybe not all, are realize we had a deal, this commission had a deal on the table uh, over a year ago uh, to basically mirror what Kent County did, and that's to put fiber to every home and business in the county. In the 11th hour, unfortunately, the contractor we chose could not capitalize their portion of the project. Otherwise, we'd be sitting here today with probably about two-thirds of the county already hooked up. So sadly, we had to dust ourselves off, pick ourselves up, and go in another direction. Thus, we, this commission formed the Broadband Advisory Commission, and there are 
plenty of women on there, but there are men. It is a combined board, so it's very diversified. Um, and I am a liaison to it. And yes, they have done great work. They're very aggressive. And they're only supposed to meet once a month. They have taken upon themselves to meet basically every week. And they have uh, talked to 14 different providers right now with different ideas on ways to serve the unserved and underserved areas of the county, as well as overbuilding the existing. Because all you people that have nice broadband now, 10 years from now, if we don't keep up with the technology, you will not have nice broadband. So that's where we are at the county now, and we are moving forward. Um, Steve Wilson. Yeah, I want to explain a little bit about how it ca how it came to be that the plan we had came apart. We uh, one of the things that you have to realize with broadband is just the point Chris was mentioning, which is density. It takes about 20 houses per mile to make broadband economically feasible for the providers. And since in North County and around this loop, the density was I don't know five, six, seven, way lower. It wound up that the county was going to be subsidizing this plan with six or seven million taxpayer dollars. Anytime we get taxpayer dollars involved, we're pretty cautious about who it is we do business with. And when we started writing a contract with this outfit, it turned out their financing was not the greatest. And in fact, they withdrew the contract and we wound up with uh, the company basically not being able to satisfy it. So that's how the thing came apart, but we're hot on the heels of a new one. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. It's important. Yes, Annette DiMaggio. May I say, as a North County resident and a taxpayer in this county, my dollars are just as good as anybody else in this county, and we do not have internet service. We have children that sit in their school parking lots to do their homework at 8 and 9 o'clock at night because their parents work all day and then they have to take them to do their homework. As I said, once again, I am a taxpayer in this county and I should be able to have an internet service just like everyone else. Yes, sir. Uh, ben Tillman. I, I think one thing that uh, when we talk about low density areas, which I happen to be in one, that people forget is that farms are businesses too. And there are economic implications of <coughs> making sure, or positive implications of making sure that we get broadband to these remote areas. Uh, you can't run a farm today without high technology and the high speed broadband is absolutely essential to that. I certainly am not going to propose that we start over again. I think a lot of very good work has been done by the current commissioners on this initiative. When I said I was determined to see it brought to the county, all I meant was that I'm going to push to get it all the way done. But I applaud the efforts that have gone on so far and uh, look forward to joining them. Okay, next question. Uh, Got to come up. Talk really loud. No, you have to come up and be on. You have to be on the microphone because the recording needs the microphone. On TV, really? uh, yes, you are. Congratulations. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lynn Mason. I live in Graysonville, and I moved over here about ten years ago from Anne Arundel County um, to get remarried. So I have a question about our tax rate here. It seems that um, no matter how much money my husband and I make, um, we continue to pay a lot of taxes and it's hard to get ahead. Um, I understand that the Queen Anne's County tax rate is one of the highest in the state. I think they range from 1.75% to 3.2%. Anne Arundel County, I think, was 2.4%. So uh, Mr. Duminal had mentioned that he was in office before, and I believe the tax rate increase came when he was in office. So I wanted to ask him about why that increase came to be and what he expected the future of the tax rate in the county to be. Thank you. So you want Mr. Dumino, right? Phil Dumino? Do I have to stay up here? <laughs> Either way. <laughs> You're free to go. Right. Either way. <laughs> Ms. Mason, that's a good question. Um, and yes, I was a commissioner uh, back when the property tax rate was increased and the uh, income tax rate was increased. Um, when we took office, that was our first budget cycle. And when we took office from the outgoing commissioners, uh, and there wasn't a single one of them that actually stuck around um, to help us with that issue. 
we were looking at anywhere between 18 and 20 million dollar budget shortfall. Um, so we put together a county realignment task force. I'll give you the quick condensed version because I'm being timed. But we brought in some citizens in our community, 12 people, set them up into groups of four. And we took a look at what it would cost, what, where could we reduce in, in our county spending? Where could we reduce in, in education? Um, and public safety. So we tasked these groups to take a look at several different scenarios and then come back and tell us what four million looked like under maintenance of effort for education, what six million looked like, what 10 million looked like. We managed to make some changes. We introduced uh, some early retirement packages for employees that had been here a long time. It's, it's um, probably seven to eight million dollars were, were cut from government spending. We underfunded education with permission from the state of Maryland. We underfunded education four and a half million dollars. So we turned over every stone and every rock possible before we went to our taxpayers. I will tell you right now, we have the fourth lowest property tax rate in the state your, of Maryland. Your time's up. Thank we you, sir. We had the fourth lowest property tax rate when we started this process. Thank you, sir. I'd be Thank glad you, to sir. Talk more with you. Thank you. About it. It's just there's a lot, a lot of movies. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Jim Coulter. <laughs> Is that your final answer? I'm done. <laughs> you know, 2010 and 2012, they were they were tough times. There were tough times throughout the nation, tough times across Maryland. Of the 24, 20, of the of the 24 counties that we've got in in the state. Uh, six of them increased taxes. The average increase for those six, six uh, counties were, was 6%. Uh, Queen Anne's County was outlier. They raised their, prop, or we raised our taxes 12%. We took it to the maximum allowed. Now we are uh, in our budget processes and in, in, in our accounting for, for monies, we're running reserves that are higher than we anticipated. What we, what we are doing right now is we're overtaxing our people and ending up with reserves and we need to better manage our money. We need to make better decisions on how we spend our money, how we spend our money on kids and, and education. Thank you. Elaine Harrison and then Steve Wilson. <laughs> Our tax weight was raised from 2.85 where it had historically been for longer than I can recall to the 3.2 and we have a AAA bond rating today it's on the backs of taxpayers the only way we could legally undercut maintenance of effort formula and get a waiver from the state was if we do indeed have the highest income tax allowed by state law we can do so much better um, we, we've had vehicles being put on the bond that cost us interest for 20 years we can do so much better in so many different ways and and encourage economic development but it's going to take not having the highest income tax rate allowed by state law in a county without a hospital without a full-blown university without a lot of services that the other counties who do in, who pay that same rate they enjoy those services as well and we're missing them Steve Wilson well, everybody who says uh, we can cut the taxes and we can do better and the rate's too high, they haven't had this job and been in this place or they wouldn't be saying those things because you cannot fund this level of schools, which even now is said to be low. You cannot create broadband, which apparently everybody wants and is going to cost money. You cannot do any of those things if you cut the rate cut the uh, income tax rate. The only way you can do that is to cut the income tax rate and jack the property tax rate up, which would then hit the most least able to uh, pay group of citizens. The, I think that the tax level in Queen Anne's County is exactly where it should be. And let me argue with you on the point of whether we're overfunded. We're not overfunded. We're funded very nicely but we need to have reserves in the bank because before long we're going to have a recession. And last time we wound up losing our bond rating and firing 140 people. And this time the county is going to be managed well and not have that happen. Thank you. Uh, Chris Corcorino and then Deborah Kruger. 
Um, but I spoke earlier, I think it was in my opening, I talked about sometimes you have to make decisions and people aren't going to like you on it. Um, leadership is about making tough decisions, um, e even when you know your neighbor doesn't want to wave to you when you come home because of the decision you made. And, and Phil had to make those tough decisions because they were doing what was better for the county. Because of those, t those tough decisions, these current commissioners were then able to rebuild and create a foundation that now going forward, we have a very strong foundation for a lot more economic prosperity uh, to create jobs and affordable housing here in the county of Redview. So I commend them for all the tough decisions they made uh, to get us to this point. And Commissioner Wilson is right. You do need to have money saved up for when the bad times come. Um, we didn't do that before, and that's why Phil's commission had to make those, those tough decisions because people were not thinking about the future. You gotta think more than about the issue that's in front of you, but what's the issue two and three and four years, and you have to have uh, the fortitude to make those decisions um, even when they're unpopular. Deborah Kruger. So just a quick note to add, even though we do pay the highest tax rate, we are still funding our schools at maintenance of effort, um, and that, that needs to change. So that's, that's all I have to say on that. Jim Marin. Well, you know, I'm going to commend Steve Wilson because he's 100% correct. You know, that's, this is one of the dirty pictures that you get with politics. Somebody's always going to come up and say, oh, we're overtaxing somebody, we're overspending too much money. Our services in this county are, are extremely at a high level right now. I will say, if you want to cut the piggyback tax, every 0.1% is 1.2 million. If you want to go back to 2.85, that's over $4 million. Where do you want to cut it from? That's the bottom line, is where do you want to cut it from? Everybody talks about they want broadband, we want economic development, all these things take money. And we are, we are extremely careful with where we put the money and where we spend the money to bring this county up to the level it is at right now. Thank you. Uh, Jack Wilson, and then let me just comment that we will not be able to take any more questions. We're gonna to move to the closing arguments after we finish this round. Lynn, okay. you asked a great one. No. <laughs> Can I leave Jack now? <laughs> Jack Wilson. Yeah, not to mention, we, there's some things that, that we know of coming down the pike that are going to be some big tickets. Uh, one of them, and I don't know how many people are following it, is the Kerwin Commission. We're dealing with education. One of, it's our biggest ticket in the county. We fund 57% of our county board of education budget right here. That's going to take a drastic change next year if what the Kerwin Commission is recommending goes through. For Queen Anne's County alone, they're looking at a 10% pay hike for teachers. That's $7.5 million cash out of our bank next year. That's going to be a big hit. The other one we have, the MS4 permits, between 2 and $2.4 million to bring our stormwater management into uh, today's standards. So that's a $10 million hit that we could face as early as next year. And that's going to get phased in over the next 10 years. So that's something we've got to be planning for. So to, to cut taxes right now, I think it would be a little irresponsible until we know what we've got, uh, what we're going to have to pay going forward. So I think we're in a good spot, like Commissioner Wilson said, and I think we need to sit tight and see what we're going to face over the next couple of years. Okay, that you're excused. <laughs> Okay, it's, uh, it's time for the closing, uh, closing statements. Uh, the first district, the, the district that will go first is District 4. You went last on the way, on the way in, you're first on the way out, okay? Which one? Uh, no, wait, uh, hang on a second. You're right. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, and yes, let me see. Chris Corcorino went first. How about Deborah Kruger, you go first. So I only have a minute, but I just need to make a point again about maintenance of effort. There's, um, we need to fund our schools better. Our teachers are paid below the state average as far as um, teacher salaries go. Kerwin Commission, please support it. There, there is additional funding for our county in that Kerwin Commission, and please vote yes on question one, which is fix the fund. We will get the money that we've been promised for years from gambling, and we need that money the first year. If we get that money, it's an $800,000 um, plus for our county and then it increases year after year for that. So that's what I have to say about education. Again, I, I have, um, I usually wear a Fitbit, I don't have it on tonight, but I have walked 270 miles as of October 1st, knocking on over 500 doors to speak to the citizens of Queen Anne's County. And like I said in my opening statement, I am running because I believe that everybody has a voice in their government. And the reason I am knocking on doors and doing the work that I am doing is because I want to honor that. And so I want to make sure that everybody's voice is heard. So please, I'd like your vote. Thank you. 
Chris Corcorino. Thank you. Everybody's talking about education. Um, as I said in my opening, I have three daughters who are in the school system here, and they're going to be in the school system for uh, at least you know the next 10 years, unless they don't get good grades, then maybe a little bit longer. Um, the education in this county is top notch. Our teachers are fantastic. My kids are getting an amazing education. Um, and, and what I, I think is unfortunate is when we're talking about maintenance effort and school funding, we, we tend to overlook what a phenomenal job our teachers are doing, and I'm grateful for it uh, every single day. Um, I will be there to make sure that um, our students are taken care of. Um, it's something that's important to me. Uh, I, as I said, I'm the only one that has three kids currently in the school system, um, so it means a tremendous amount to me. Uh, I'm running because this county and this county school system is has made me who I am, um, and this is an obligation that I have to pay back to the community that helped me become who I am. Thank you. I hope I earned your vote. Um, the second uh, second team will be second candidates will be the at large candidates, and Elaine Harrison, you go first, and Jim Moran second. Well, when bad things happen to me in my life, I tend to take action against them. And um, the, the first time, I changed Maryland laws. This time, I want to I wanna change the, the, bring back the heart to our community. Um, read a quote the other day that I really liked. And, um, it, it just, it really spoke to the type of person that I am and what I want to do. And um, if you can no longer accept the things you cannot change, you change the things you cannot accept. And I know we can do better in this county. I know a lot about the history of this county. I know its people. I know our communities. And I want to bring the heart back to us. Thank you. Jim Moran. Well, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Uh, you know, government, you, you've got to you got to love what you do, because there's there's not a lot of rewards here, and there's a lot of just the opposite from the rewards. Uh, I will say that it's all about leadership. I mean, you've heard tonight about all the different issues we're going to face, and all on all of those issues, we have an answer. We've proven that answer over the last four years. The Team QAC slate is ready to continue on. We will get broadband within four years. Jack's on top of that. Steve's going to keep us straight on our AAA bond rating. You know, Chris brings the schools. And I will say, as a commissioner, I funded the schools $6 million over maintenance of effort in my five years on the uh, commission. So we understand what we need to do, and we are working our way there. But to take, you know, again, to take and sell people, you're going to do cut taxes, you're going to do all this. It's, you know, fairy dust. Thank you. Uh, District 2, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, District 1, Annette DiMaggio is first, Jack Wilson second. Well, I, I sit on the Queen Eats County Board of Education. I did that for education of all children. At the time I had a, my youngest child was at the high school level. He's now graduated and in college. And um, I look out for Northern Queen Eats County because once again, I feel that Northern Queen Anne's County is the stepchild of this county. And I have been a voice for that part of the county for years now. I feed the people in that county. I listen to those people. They call me when they have problems, when good or bad. I'm the first person that they want to respond to in Northern Queen Anne's County. I want that to be the whole county. I want to be the eyes and the ears of this county so that they know that someone's listening to them. The majority of you sitting out there, whether you get the correct answer or not, you just want to know that you have been heard. And that's what I bring into this, listening and, and action if possible. Sometimes it's not always able, you're not able to always do everything that everyone wants you to do. But with that, um, I ask for your vote. Thank you. Jack Wilson. 
All right, um, so closings are supposed to be the big hammer at home. Um, I'm just, I, I'm not about that. People that know me, and, and I didn't put 270 miles on my Fitbit, but I have put 35,000 miles on my car in three years. So I do get around, I do see people, and everybody out here I've seen at least once. Um, one of the things I don't like, and, and, and that just alluded to, uh, uh, if she can do something. I, in business, personal, my wife will tell you, my kids will tell you, people that work for me will tell you, I don't like two sayings. One is, I can't do this, or that's the way we've always done it. I don't believe in that. Because at the end of the day, there's always another way, whether it could be more efficient, it could be better, it could cost the taxpayers less dollars. And as a commissioner, that's the way I've done it for three years, that's the way I'm going to continue to do it, as well as reaching out to the community. My phone is my personal phone, my business phone, my home phone, my kid phone. So I, hopefully uh, November 6th you'll see fit to put me back in Liberty Street for four years and I appreciate it, thank you. The next team is District 2, Ben Tillman first, Steve Wilson second. Uh, Queen Anne County has actually supported my family for more than a few generations and it seems appropriate that I do something of a public nature to return that support. Uh, if I am elected, which I hope I will be, I will retire then. But I think of my children and my grandchildren and I want to pass on the county in as good a shape as I possibly can. And to that end, I wanted to run for county commissioner with an eye to a strategic vision, one that goes on beyond just four years, one that goes to the next generation. And I hope you'll support the effort. I think Queen Anne County is a wonderful place to live. I think everybody up here with me would agree with that. And, well, you made me nervous. <laughs> I got a stop sign. Uh, uh, supports that vision. And uh, I hope you vote for me in November. Thank you very much. Steve Wilson. Well, I hardly know what to say speaking about my opponent, who isn't my opponent, but my friend, but I have to point out he's, he's, he's young and inexperienced. Just take a look. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? If I need a replacement, you couldn't get a better guy. <laughs> so I thank you for uh, your support in all this. I think we've got the county in good shape right now. I'd like to keep it there. We're, uh, this is not a job that you can just walk into and understand what you're doing. There's a learning curve in it, and the folks who are up here have had that curve. Uh, I've been actually doing this for 25 years on various boards, and I've been commissioner for four years and president for two years, and uh, I'd like your support to continue in the same direction in 15 seconds, and I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> Batting cleanup is District 3. <laughs> Jim Coulter first, Phil Duminell second. See, you thought I was going to go last. <laughs> Did I get it backwards? We all right? Nope. Yeah, that, that, okay. This is fine. We'll play. There we go. <laughs> it's really been an honor through this whole process. And I really do think that we've got some really great people up here. This is a tough, tough job. What's even tougher is to try to answer these very, very probing questions in one minute. Because you kind of sometimes get a, the wrong implication of what people say. These people are good people. They work very hard. I'm not running as part of a slate. I don't have a political boss. What you get is me. I've got a lot of good experience managing a lot of money and a lot of people. I've got uh, a, a good heart and a good mind. And I help you vote for me. Bill Dumino. I didn't I didn't get a chance to thank everybody for being here at my opening statements and the League of Women Voters for putting on uh, an excellent forum uh, every time that I participated in it. Um, I want to I want to say um, in closing that being an elected official and some of the folks up here uh, mentioned it takes a certain amount of intestinal fortitude to make those tough decisions. In fact, my wife sometimes scratches her head when I was a commissioner before, why are you doing this? It's to ensure that our community continues to stay a great place to live and raise children. Like Chris, I have two kids in the school system now. I had three. My wife and I are extremely happy with the education that those kids are getting. 
uh, and I think it's important to fund and make sure that we pay our teachers. I'd like to see some more accountability on the Board of Education's uh, budget process. Um, perhaps the commissioners have a little more input and how those dollars and line items are established. So on November 6th, please vote for Phil Dumanel in, in the Team QAC slate. Thank you. Now it's time to applaud. <laughs> Congratulations, congratulations to you all. Thank you, audience, you've been great. Thank you.